Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video, you'll probably have guessed by the title and the thumbnail, we're looking at two fun fighters. Now, a couple of things I've got to get out of the way first. First of all, this video is not sponsored in any way, shape or form. I've got no affiliation to either of these manufacturers or the people involved with making these kits. Both of these kits were bought out of my own pocket. Um, and the purpose of this video or this series of videos is to answer a question I've had for a long time. And that is, what is the difference between a Cambrian fun fighter and a Cambria fun fighter? As we go along, I'm sure we'll figure out what the differences are and if there is any great difference in the performance at the end. Both of the aeroplanes are going to have uh, near as damn it identical engines. Um, I've got a pair of OS32 SXs. Um, which would be ideal for these. The plan is to do um, a series of videos. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at basically what's in each box. Um, the backstory, if you don't know, if you're not in the UK, these are 42 inch span, what I'd call standoff scale, maybe even some people might call them cartoon scale warbirds. These two are both P51 Mustangs. The original, I'm gonna, it's hard to describe, the original manufacturers of these designs, I believe were two brothers or two business partners. And we're talking back in the 70s sometime uh, here in the UK. They had the range of fun fighters. Uh, for some reason, the, the brothers or the partners split company, but they both took equal rights to the designs. These companies went through various different forms and ownership over the years and have become Cambria, which is funfighters.co.uk and Cambrian Model Company, which I'm not sure off the top of my head what their website is. Um, there'll be links to them below anyway. I know through speaking to Darren at Cambria, that a lot of development work has gone on with these designs over the years since he's been involved. I've not spoken to Cambrian. I don't know who owns Cambrian or runs it, so I haven't spoken to them. Um, Darren knows I'm going to be doing this series of videos. Um, if somebody from Cambrian is watching this, this is meant to be and will be unbiased. Um, it's basically going to be a case of this is what I found in the box. So, as I said, this first section of the series is going to be um, initial inspection, looking at what's in the box. Um, I can honestly say I've literally taken the lid, lid off both of them and that's it. Oh, there's a kit inside. Oh, there's a kit inside. I put the lids back on. The, the Cambria P51, I've only had a couple of months. The Cambrian Fun Fighter, I've had only a couple of years four years I think because um, I bought it when I was at a show and I thought I want to have one of them I'll build it one day and, that one and day never is, did and that one day is coming around yes so that one day is now or soon so which one are we going to look at first this one Cambrian so this is going to be the Cambrian again I'll probably be putting on screen which kit we're looking at at which time over. So the first thing to notice, again, I don't know how well you better see on camera there. That's the box art, um, a picture of a full-size Mustang, 42 inch span, the part number, uh, simple, easy to fly, near scale model of the famous World War II fighter, quick build kit containing veneered foam wings, pre-cut balsa and plywood parts, molded canopy, accessories, full-size plant and instructions. Further stuff will be required to finish it. So, again, I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but we've got what looks like a tissue liner in the box. First thing to come out, instructions. Uh, it's, in like a, it's in like a bag that um, birthday cards come in, cellophane bag, and it's sealed. I haven't even opened these for the first time. It, I'm opening these for the first time. I haven't opened these before. I don't know how many pages that is, but that's a few pages. Cambrianplanes.com is the manufacturer or the website of this manufacturer. 
That's quite a thick, actually, it's not as many pages as I thought. That's cardboard. That's a, <laughs> it's like a really thick, light cardboard, heavy paper on the front. Um, introduction, building instructions. Uh, where else have we got? It's basically step by step, glue this to that. Duh. It's all, yeah, it's all step by step. And then you've got covering, finishing and final assembly. Uh, CG, I'm guessing, well, it will be on the plan. Flying notes. So yeah, what I call a fairly standard set of instructions and then a parts list at the back. Um, there should be, a, I'm guessing the draw, well, the drawing is going to be the plan. Yeah, unless there is. Unless there is like a smaller drawing. There's a plan. Yeah, I can see that's the plan. So, next out of the box is the plan. I have seen these before because my dad's built quite a few of these over the years. I haven't seen these. So we have a full size plan. And that is full size. <laughs> that is, from my hand, to my, from my left hand to my right hand is the length of the model. A bit difficult to see because it's trying to roll up on itself. But it's a basic three channel model. I believe they can have rudders fitted. Um, and I know the higher powered ones, it's recommended that they have rudders fitted due to torque from the engine. You can tell this plan's been rolled up for a while. So what we do is when we come to actually build it, we'll lay that out for a while to let it flatten out. I know with the Camry and uh, Fun Fighters, that a lot of them need to have rudders because for the show videos, there's a part of it where they do a knife edge along the runway. And some of them do a knife edge and some of them do kind of knife edge. Yeah, but the rudders to stop the torque effect from the high-powered engines that they're using. Yeah, but some of them need to have rudders. Yes, because... Yeah. yeah. For a 25, and I believe a normal 32, you don't need to have a rudder. Uh, I will research that, so don't quote me on that. Right, so, in the box, just a quick look. We've got a number of balsa parts, a couple of bags of stuff. There's a push, a snake push rod which given the length I'd say that's for the elevator. Um, but importantly, we have got foam core wings, two of. Now, I don't know, but I believe these are CNC cut and veneered. That's, I don't know what that is, but I wouldn't say that's a beachy. One yeah, that is something else I've just noticed as well. The top surface on, of, the, on that one, it's not the same on this one, it's not the same on that one. No. Yeah, okay. So, straight away, the first thing I've noticed we've noticed here is uh, no, it goes thinner out to the root. Right, let's look at the roots so we can identify. Then it goes thinner out to the top. Yeah, so the top surface veneer is thicker than the bottom surface at the root, but at the tip, they're both the same thickness. How on earth have they managed to achieve that? Or is it just the way it's been sanded? It could just be how it's been sanded. It's been like, see how it's been cut at the end of yeah. it? So it might not be thicker at all. It might have, we'll see when we come to actually sand it to sand it and see what it's like. But that's, uh, again, that's just something I've noticed. Angle. Yeah, that's a dihedral. So you've got dihedral cut into it already. But I think that just makes it look thicker. Yeah. Right, so where do these come from? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Cause do, do these come from here? Nope. But look, look at it. They are sent up this here. So it's just the cut yeah. on it. Okay, so put that wing back in there. Is it that way? I don't know. Yes. Middle piece. So, a set of wings. I'm not going to take it out of the packaging just now, but I'll have a quick 
look through. This is the moulded canopy. It's a moulded canopy. Yeah, it's a, it's a clear moulded canopy. Mustang shape. Um, I'll go through these bags. So these bags just says Fun Fighter accessory pack and Fun Fighter bolster pack. Now I'm wondering if, or I think the hardware would be the same for all of the Fun Fighters range that they do, hence why they make up packs and just throw the packs in. Um, That's a ply pack. There you go, you've got a Fun Fighter ply pack and a Fun Fighter bolster pack. So they, they might have the same bolster parts. The same ply parts for all of the range, I don't know. I wouldn't have thought so because I know the Mustangs are different. The Mustangs have the wings put on backwards. The dowels are at the back and the wing bolts at the front. That's weird. No, it's because of the air cooler on the front, on underneath. Yeah. It'll make sense when we build it. Um, one thing I have noticed, all of these parts, you've seen there, that yeah. all of the individual parts numbered. are either laser Increased. numbered or they're stamped, you know, ink stamped, so you can identify them all. So that's the bags and stuff. And then there's loads of, there's loads of yeah, so just in. yeah it, it does honestly look like it's all just been taken out of bags. Yeah, just put in. Now, I haven't been in here, so it's not me that's taken tape off or anything like that. So, yeah. Doesn't appear to be any. Tape no. Well, like there's pieces here. I mean, this is this bolster piece. Again, I'm assuming from what I can think of how they're built, that's your front top deck. It's got angle pieces on it. Uh, no, it's got chamfers already cut into the sides. Um, what else have we got? There's a fin there, or well, part of a fin, rudder. So it's all quite nicely cut. One suit. Actually, really quite nicely cut laser stuff on there. There's hardly any burning on that. No, hardly any mark on the balsa whatsoever. So that's been cut really well. I'm not going to take out all of the balsa parts because the more we take out, the more it's awkward to get back in. Uh, and we've got a fuselage side. Yeah, so it goes that way. Something like that. Um, that... <coughs> I don't know. It's not laser cut. Maybe router cut. It might be routed, but the holes in there are too square for yeah. routing. I don't know. There's pinholes, three pinholes, as if it's hand cut. I don't know. It could be hand batch cut. Or it's die stamped. Which is a bit old school. I, I honestly don't know how that's cut. It's certainly not laser cut. And it's got a standard light ply bend to it. Uh, has the other one got a bend the other way? Yes, it has. So we can actually use that to our advantage and make a left and right hand side with a fuselage that's pre bent. Pre bent to make it ready. Yeah, to actually get it to yeah. taper in at the back. And there's various blocks and pieces, but again, they're all numbered, so we know where they're going to go. That's the under wing yeah. air scoop. Yeah. For, is it oil cooler on them, the Mustangs? I can't remember, but there's, I know there's an under scoop underneath the wing. And that is just about it for the kit. You know, so there's first impressions, it's a complete kit. Um, Nice colour on the front of the uh, instructions, clear plan, clear concise plan. All of the balsa parts appear to be nicely cut, they're just a bit random in the box. Um, especially when some of them, some of the balsa parts are in a bag. It's not true. It's not symmetrical. Well, it's not symmetrical. The sand and cut. Yeah, well, that's minor though. I just, I just looked at it. Yeah, we we'll would probably have to. That's all. That's probably been hand sanded mm. on a band source, yeah. on a band belt sander to shape. So we can shape that. That's not a problem. But what this model is going to be doing, going fast, we're not really going to worry too much about it. Yeah. So that is that kit. I think that was the whole point in this. Yeah. 
have scaleish warboards. They don't need to worry about much. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll get this one back into its box and we'll have a look at the Cambria version. Okay, so we're now moving on to the Cambria P51 Mustang kit. Um, the Again, the website for them will be listed in the, in the uh, description below. But this, these are from www.funfighters.co.uk. Um, they do a range of kits. Um, there's six fun fighters in the range, plus a couple of others that aren't fun fighters. Box art, again, I don't know how well you've to see it. Um, but it's nice, colourful. Gives you a, a bit of uh, information there about it, but nothing too different. Oh, it does say here, this one is 43 inch span, so it's an inch bigger. Um, weight, 3.3 pounds. 25 to 38 size engine, electric motor, 1150 to 1250 kV, 60 amp, 4S, 2000 milliamp, 40 to 90 C. Um, I know there is a specific motor that they use and it's a Sunny Sky motor. I just can't think what it is off the top of my head. Do we not have one? But I do think we have. Is it the same one as the wireless? No, but it's similar. <coughs> but I think we have got one. Anyway, these aren't going to be electric anyway. So, in the box, what have we got? Again, first thing you see is the instructions. Um, yeah, funfighters.co.uk. Near scale, radio controlled model of the famous World War II aircraft. Important, please read. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so there's quite a lot of information there before you even start building the model. Very similar to the other one. More or less exactly the same. 20 to 36 size motor, three channel. Building instructions. I'm not going to go into too much detail as to what the instructions say, but the first thing I noticed there, just turning the page, is we've actually got some pictures. Um, and they're saying it's actually a guide, not an actual detailed model specific. Um, Yeah, there's pictures there for the for the build, flying notes, and then okay, so there's some information there about what's that going to be about? Oh, no. So there's an additional thing here, which looks like you can have a twin elevator push rod as opposed to a single elevator. Oh, so it's a racing push rod. So if you're going to be going faster, just more elevator authority. <clears throat> and then there's various other details there. And then there's parts list. And on the back, there is a parts identification sheet, which is good. So that's the instructions. Surprise, surprise, we do have another plan. This time it's folded, so it's easier to put on the bench. And it's upside down. Just because there's, there's, there's more paper. There's a white border. Yeah, so just looking on the plans, 1972, the fun fighters were first established. Um, so yeah, fairly standard looking plan. All the information's there. There's even like pictorial, pictograms, I think they're called, or pictorials on how to assemble stuff. Yeah, so it's all quite detailed. There's even an idea of a colour scheme, even though it's not in colour. But it tells you the colours. Yeah, it tells you the colours. Yeah, so that will work quite well. So that's the plan. We'll study it in detail and actually can build it.
I think I should get it all back together. That's the plan. Right, so then we then got a lot of packing material. There's your paper. Almost like you've grabbed it out of there. Well, I need to scrub it over to get up of it. So we've actually got block balls of material, tips. Mm. There's actually vacuum formed. Are you okay? We'll look at that in a second. There's vacuum formed exhaust stubs, scale details. There's a tank included, which looks tiny. <laughs> There's an engine mount included, which is awesome. looks pretty big. Bigger than the fuel tank. That, I'm guessing, is the elevator joiner, which isn't bent yet. And hardware and things like that. That tank does look small. Anyway, so that's a, like a hardware pack. There is clear vacuum form canopy. Again, P51 style. Strangely enough, that's what we're building. Um, so again, this is a slight difference on those. This is all packed together. It's like elastic banded together. Leading edge. So it's an aileron template. Mm -hmm. So that's the size of aileron it's going to be. Push rods, torque rods, triangle, leading edges, I'm guessing. Mm. So that's a hard work, uh, no, a pack of stuff there. Top block looks longer. That's the top deck, yep. Again, it's all shaped. Um, wings. So you're saying this looks as though it's Milt. my word. Right, straight away, there's another difference I've noticed here. These wings at the tips are Thin. noticeably thinner. I've also noticed something else as well. So, the reason why there's a template for the aileron is the wing is cut to the training edge and veneered to the training edge. So the, the whole structure is one piece, which will make the aerofoil continuous all the way across. We're not relying on stock material for making up the ailerons. So yeah, I'd actually say that wing aerofoil is thinner. Certainly at the tip, it's thinner. Mm -hmm. Nicely cut wings. Yeah, I'm not going to pull the other one out because I suspect that's exactly the same. So we're already picking up a few differences straight away. I think that just looks like it's melted, so we can get everything as close together. Yeah, as they're, as they're trying to get as much as they can out of yeah. the piece of foam. <coughs> That's some very nice laser cutting. See how fine that is mm. going through there? And it's actually cut from that side. Have they got it set up properly though? What do you mean? So that the laser... So that the middle of it... The curve? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's some quite nice laser cutting there. That's a firewall, which gets laminated together, just because it's identical. And this is 3mm, it's laminated together to make 6mm. Another former, former. I'm not sure what that is. I am wondering if that is a nose ring for an electric mount. I don't know how well you're able to see that. It might not be, but if it is, that's quite a nice added feature. I'll have to have a look through the instructions. So that's 3mm birch ply. It all just falls out. Yeah, up. there's... <laughs> I'm not actually going to try and take that out. There's a bit come out of there already somewhere. Mm. All of the balsa parts in here. What's that? That's the tail plane. So the tail plane is actually having a spar put in it by the looks of it. Really? Again, it's all nicely laser cut. And it has fallen out of the sprue, if that's the right word. Yeah, that'll be the spar there. So it's a, it's a spruce spar. It will be thick enough. Yeah, it, trust me, it will it be thick enough. That doesn't look thick enough. It will be thick enough. So yeah, the, the balsa parts are all nicely laser cut. I said, I'm not gonna pull them all out. Yeah, because it'll make the packing 
more awkward, but I'm going to have to take this one out, or even just move it across. Because yeah. I want to see this here. So that is a fuselage side. Yes, I'll just follow it over. Yeah, but what's the difference between this one and the other one? I don't know. What did? Yeah, so there's a slightly different shape, but what's the big difference? The airscope. No, what's the big difference with this side? I don't know. This is balsa. Oh. The other one's light ply. Is it? Yeah. So, this one, I suspect, is going to be a lot lighter overall. The Cambry R is, I suspect, is going to be a lot lighter than the Cambrian. So, there's two fusel sides and another rectangular piece of balsa. I'm not exactly sure what that's for yet. Um, and then we've got another laser cut part. These are 16th birch ply. Two large doublers. That's a very narrow bit there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That would be a wing bolt strengthening piece. It's only one wing bolt. Yeah. So yeah, that's all very nice laser cutting. Right, and that is generally all of that kit. So there's a few differences we noticed already. Um, so I'm not going to take too much of it out because it's going to be awkward to get back in. I would say in general, on first inspection, the Cambria kit is possibly better presented. Um, it's not saying that the Cambrian is badly presented, it just looks a bit more, it's thrown in the box, whereas this one it's all... This one seems a bit more up to date with like newer... <coughs> newer ways of doing things. Um, because like the laser cut parts is all still in the yeah to keep it all together. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's hard to say. I mean, really, that's not a, a major thing from a kit no. building point of view because all you're going to do is rip those parts out and glue them together. But when you open the box and look at it, it, it looks better. This looks so it's better presented. Um. The one thing I would say is it doesn't appear to be any damage to any parts. Oh, it she goes. In either kit. The Cambria kit, I bought at a show, so I don't know how that would have been shipped mail order. The Cambria, no, sorry, the Cambria mm was bought at a show. The Cambria kit was mailed to me. Um, and this box just had a brown paper and tape wrapping on it, nothing extra to protect it or anything and this is how it's arrived so it's all in good shape um so yeah i'd say it's pretty good kits to be honest the, the proof is going to be in the pudding when we come to build them um but yeah that's um that's initial look at the two kits um any questions on the two of them so far put them in the comments below we will start building these relatively soon. Um, and it's not going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to build them. It's going to be building the two airplanes side by side and noticing differences and pointing out the differences. Um, as I said, it won't be started just yet because we've got a few other things to finish first, but they don't take up much space to build. So we should be able to get onto them fairly soon. Um, if you're liking this sort of content, and you're not already please subscribe it's all greatly appreciated doesn't cost you a penny if you're liking the particular videos give us a thumbs up um and so if there's any questions or comments stick them below information on these kits will be in the description where you can buy them from going back over what i said at the beginning of the video there's no affiliation um that's not sponsored both of these kits have been bought out of my own pocket with my own money um i'm under no influence to be biased towards one or the other if i find a major glaring problem i'll take it to the manufacturer um i don't think i will these kits have been around long enough that i'd like to think they've ironed out all the bugs and i'm really looking forward to signing them yeah i'm looking forward to flying them yeah you've flown one fun fighter that was underpowered yeah it was it was on a 25 
it was an older airframe that hadn't been built brilliantly. Mm. Um, my dad just got it readied for flying. He didn't do much work to it, I don't think. I think he bought it cheap and just yeah. made it work. Um, and then you had an unfortunate launch. Mm. And then... And smash it to bits. Harry it into the ground. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'd be good to get others going again. As well as these two kits, I've also got another fun fighter kit up there, which I'll probably do as a separate build at some point, which is an electric Spitfire from Cambrian. And I might, at some point in the future, get another kit from Cambria just to see how different the kits are in the same range, if that makes sense. Um, I suspect by design they'll be the same build ethos, st build style. It'll just be like wing plan font, but slightly different and things like that. But anyway, that's the two kits. Um, let us know what you think. Let us know if there's anything you particularly want to see. Um, and the next video in the build series for these will probably be us making a start of going through page one of the instructions for both kits. So until then, from myself and Ewan here in the workshop, we'll catch you later. Bye.